Before working with Match Mover, remember two things. At this time, Autodesk Match Mover is available for subscription customers only and therefore not publicly available for download. Second, this video is not an in-depth lesson about how to use Match Mover, but rather a workflow approach on the interoperability between Match Mover and 3ds Max. Start Autodesk Match Mover. By default, the UI is set to a light mode. This is fine for now. When you are planning to use Match Mover with 3ds Max, it is imperative to access the Preferences dialog in the Edit menu, and then to set the 3D Up axis to Z to match the 3ds Max coordinate system. Load your live footage using the Load Sequence icon. You can do the same using the File menu. Browse and select the first image in the sequence. Set the frame rate accordingly, in this particular case 30 frames per second. This varies with the camera you use to capture the footage. If you need to, right-click the view and choose View Fit to Viewport. Play back the animation to cache it to disk. You are ready to start the tracking process. Click the Run the Automatic Tracking icon on the toolbar. Ensure all options are enabled and click Run. This is as easy as it gets. Match Mover will pick tracking points and analyze them on the fly. Anything that's green is a solid track. Anything that's yellow is less than solid but still workable. At this time, you can potentially export the data to 3ds Max, but then you'd have to tweak it there. It is best to fine-tune the data a little bit more to make the transition even easier. This is done by establishing a coordinate system to define an origin, directional axis, and a reference distance before you go to 3ds Max. In Match Mover, go to the first frame. The parking white markings are going to be of some help, actually. Choose Window, Parameters Window. A new UI element appears on the right. Use the Fit to Viewport action once again to view the whole background. From the 3D Scene menu, choose New Coordinate System. The first tracker, Auto 0000, becomes the origin by default. You often need to redefine the origin. In this case, Tracker Auto 167 could be the new origin. This makes it easy to define an x-axis going towards Auto 140 and a y-axis going towards Auto 169. So go ahead and set the origin to Auto 167. In the Axis 1 tab, set the x-axis to go from the origin to Tracker Auto 140. In the Axis 2 tab, set the Y axis to go from the origin to Tracker Auto 169. One last thing remains, and that is to establish a reference distance so that the units match in 3ds Max. The width of a car slot, or the distance between trackers 167 and 69, was measured at exactly 10 feet, or 120 inches. The system units in 3ds Max being in inches by default, Set the distance value to 120 and specify that distance to be between trackers Auto 167 and Auto 169. Click the Apply Coordinate System when done. That's it. Export the file as a Max script file .ms, with the default options and go to 3ds Max. The third and last part of this series shows you how to integrate the information you saved into 3ds Max.